I was Hany Yashaba Rico from Street Schools, and of course, even before we took him, already did a lot of his film watching and then especially after we took him i went back and watched everything especially the 14 interceptions but of course first of all i have a bad memory but this will also be my first time analyzing it as like is this luck or skill so as you can see by the title we're going to take a look at all 14 of emmanuel forbes's interceptions this is the commander's first round pick of the 2023 nfl draft we drafted him 16th overall ahead of the guys like christian gonzalez deontay banks most notably because he was the best ball hawk in the draft out of all of the cornerbacks again i'm gonna say he's basically like the bryce young of corners i'm pretty high on emmanuel forbes i'm not really worried about the weight and i feel like if anything we are lucky to get him where we got him the only reason we got him at 16th overall was because of the weight if this guy was 190 he would have never made it to the 16th overall pick anyway and if we're ignoring weight he's it's between him and devon witherspoon with the best tape of course christian gonzalez has some of the best traits he's the guy that you look at like maybe that could be sauce Gardner or something like that you could definitely see that in him i love christian gonzalez so i'm not one of those commanders fans that now that we don't have christian gonzalez now i just suddenly realize how flawed he was i knew going into the draft he didn't do much in the run game and if anybody saw the georgia game it was me that's a diehard georgia bulldog fan and my brother happens to be an oregon fan so i was like waiting on that game ever since he was scheduled i was like man we gonna see my brother he wasn't talking crazy but he was like hey man i think oregon can at least make some noise i don't think we'll win but i think we can do something against georgia so i was walking into that game like let's get it man i'm ready to see what the oregon ducks are doing so of course i've watched every georgia game that they've ever had since i've been a fan but i paid special attention to that game so christian gonzalez if anybody knew what he had going on good and bad it was me but still i really liked him I'm not gonna sit here and act like i don't now that we have emmanuel forbes but i also really like emmanuel forbes again i call him the bright young of corners because he's elite at a lot of things but the only thing you worry about is his size and with bryce young is his height and his weight with emmanuel forbes is only the weight because he's six foot one really long arms so even though he's kind of like a smaller guy skinnier guy where bigger guys can kind of beat him against press man he also has really good technique and those long arms help a lot as well but we're talking about hips we're talking about speed burst explosion he literally has everything you want and most notably the thing that the commander's defense has been the worst at is first of all getting off the field on third downs and stuff like that even though we improved last year but it's taking away the ball we've been top five in defense and top 10 in like various statistics advanced statistics service statistics like yards a out per game all of the stuff that you would hope to be top five in to be an elite defense but the reason that we've been a really really good defense and not an elite one that you can say is because we don't take the ball away we were bottom five in interceptions last year and emmanuel forbes was the best ball skills corner in this draft so at the very least we hope he can fix that and i always project we have the luxury as commanders fans and with this defense specifically this defensive line that we can project linebackers to be better here than they were elsewhere because they're behind this dominant defensive line the same thing goes for corners i mean emmanuel forbes alone and i'm not trying to turn this into a whole emmanuel forbes breakdown because i've already done a full almost 30 minute breakdown of his weaknesses and strengths and everything and i'm going to do another breakdown when i do my overall draft grade and review for each pick and my overall grade and everything make sure you stay tuned for that but my point is all also, that Emmanuel Forbes playing in Mississippi State, he played in the SEC. And you're like, well, I mean, he was on the SEC team, but his SEC team wasn't as good as the other ones. When he's going against Georgia, Georgia's offensive line is better than his defensive line. When he's going against Alabama, the same thing. Probably even when he's going against Florida, maybe even Kentucky. So, you know, I'm not saying that Mississippi State is necessarily a bottom feeder in the SEC, but he's having to go against all of these SEC guys talent-wise. But it's not like his defensive line is getting consistent pressure to where he's not having to um, cover really long. And I feel like, if anything, he's going to have to cover for less time going into the NFL than he did in Mississippi State. So I'm assuming that those ball hawk things that he likes to do, taking those risks, which I love. I love the risk taking because that's the only one you're going to make plays as a corner cornerback this day and age in football you're gonna have to take risks sometimes you may get burnt but um so a lot of the times he's just so instinctual he's so smart i think he's gonna make the right decision way more times than none i don't like the javon Diggs uh comp because he's like it's not like he's getting toasted any play that he's not getting an interception that's pretty much javon Diggs. if he's not getting an interception he's getting toasted I feel like emmanuel forbes is a really good cover corner even when he's not getting interceptions but today i want to dive into these interceptions man because when you get 14 interceptions and then in your career get six pick sixes as well some of these got to be luck right so i'm gonna be 
as honest, as brutally honest as I can be. And we're going to really dive into this tape to see how much he really earned a lot of these interceptions, how many were luck and how many were skill. Now, I'm going to let you know now it's a mix of both. It's not like all of his interceptions were lucky. I'm not saying that at all. Again, I'm a big fan of Emmanuel Forbes. I'm glad to have him. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit here and act like, you know, six pick sixes and 14 interceptions was just pure skill. Him just having the best coverage ever. We're going to look at the tape. You'll see, man. He got lucky on quite a few of these. So we're going to go down the list and we're going to try to identify which ones were luck and which ones were skill. Of course, with cornerbacks, uh, with a lot of parts of football, it's really hard to tell what was his responsibility or not in certain plays. So sometimes where he may be off the wide receiver by like five or more yards, you can't exactly tell if like that was just the coverage that the defensive coordinator told him to run that play. Like stay away from him. Don't let him beat you deep give up anything underneath so if he gets beats under beat underneath but then the receiver happens to just trip and fall for no reason the ball pops up he gets an interception i'm gonna analyze it and look like hey man that was not good coverage that interception is kind of lucky but at the same time there are weird situations where you really don't know what the defensive coordinator called but going in with absolutely no knowledge of what defensive coordinators are calling we're just gonna go ahead and dive right in and determine luck or skill don't care what the defensive coordinator is called because, again, I don't know. So we're just going to assume that he's supposed to have sticky, really close coverage in every single one of these interceptions that we look at. I'm not about to sit here and do mental gymnastics to try to figure out whether he's supposed to be sticky or not. It's whatever. But, yeah, man, I know it's a long intro, but I did just kind of want to dive into Emmanuel Forbes as a player before we really get into this. So before we dive into the actual film session, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately. And every time I release the formative and pinated video just like this one again apologize for the long intro but it kind of doesn't feel like an intro because i was giving you a lot of analysis in it we just haven't actually done the actual intro so i don't <laughs> i don't want to hear it about long intro and stuff like that like people always say because this one at least was just good video and then i just did the intro kind of in the beginning middle of the video whatever but either way man make sure you stay on the lookout for the live stream i'm gonna do where i open up the phone lines for y'all to call in we're gonna do a whole draft review and great again i'm opening the phone lines for y'all to call in and voice your opinions you can ask whatever question you may have for me but this is for y'all to voice your opinions we already have all of these youtubers including me giving y'all our opinions all of these commanders analysis uh, analysts my fault all of these espn analysts nfl network i want to hear how commanders fans just in general feel even all all y'all that don't have youtube channels and don't necessarily do this every day professionally or whatever so i want to hear y'all speak on it and again be on the lookout for more film sessions like these especially my channel members who are going to get the exclusive way longer version so without further ado let's get it you tell your family you're gonna be a commander Now you can say long intro because that was a pretty long intro. Let's go ahead and dive into it. First of all, before we dive into it, man, I got to give my dogs credit over there because I wouldn't have access to this if they didn't post this on YouTube. So make sure you run up those subscribers first of all as well. My boys over at Trapper Dive, man, I've been on this show before. So professional, outlined, organized, everything. I give them my full endorsement. And again, literally the only reason you're getting this because I don't have access to all 22 footage. I still don't exactly know how people are getting it i'm not one of those people that has it i can get the nfl version of it but i cannot get my hands on college film session if anybody can help me with that please let me know in the comment section i'm willing to pay for it i just literally i nobody knows nobody's willing to tell me people have to sign like ndas and stuff like that so man if y'all can help me out but either way literally the only reason you're getting this video and the only reason i'm able to even analyze this from this view like the perfect view that we want otherwise i would have had to go to his highlights is because my guys at trap or dive so make sure y'all subscribe to them follow them on twitter and everything great content man i'm telling you I'm man, I'm, big endorsement by me, man. So let's go ahead and dive into the first one. Let's go ahead and get to this, man. I'm really excited. Of course, that's Emmanuel Forbes there. Let's see how this one goes. And this one, yeah. So basically, what I was talking about in the intro, this one's pretty much pure luck. We we start this one off straight luck. This is absolute luck. Again, it looks like it's like off man coverage 
and again, I didn't want to dive into that too much, but he's not supposed to be close to this receiver. There's a reason he just keeps backpedaling. That is what he's asked to do. If he were asked to man the man this guy straight up, I'm pretty sure he would have been there to maybe even break up the pass because he has that skill set and I believe in him. But on this play specifically, again, I didn't want to dive into this too much, but it's just obvious here that he's supposed to not be close to the receiver. The goal is to not get beat deep. Looks like cover three almost or something i don't know i don't feel like analyzing everything we're just here to determine what emmanuel forbes is doing and that's luck i don't care now one thing about it too a lot of his pick sixes are nobody's in front of him and it doesn't take much of a return but this one is a pretty good return like he had to put in work uh in the beginning stages of this he had to break a tackle he had to speed past that guy shouts out to the blocks from his teammates and then he made something shake not the greatest return ever but it is more notable than most of his where he's just i mean he's out there catching an interception off of a screen of course nobody's in front of him you're gonna outrun everybody you run a four three something so uh, of course but this was a pretty good return most of his returns aren't very impressive but this one's a good one and again we're gonna easily define this one as luck we're gonna label this as luck i mean at the end of the day though i want to go ahead and take the time to say this now when you're in the right place at the right time and you just seem to always find the ball wherever you go the ball is always there i'm gonna take that man define it as luck whatever if it's luck then we need more of it because benjamin st juice needs more of it kendall fuller needs more of it our linebacker group can just can you give me some of it just a glimpse of it a taste a, 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 a trial period of it or something can we get a little bit of it on our defense so if you find a way to quantify luck, if we can measure luck, Emmanuel Forbes has an A-plus in that. He has a 99 overall luck factor. And if that can somehow translate to the NFL level, I will take it. Of course, I'm kind of joking, but I'm also kind of serious because at the end of the day, luck only presents itself to people that, that are prepared for it and that are in the right place at the right time. You can't be lucky if he's not playing the right coverage if he was just further back for some crazy reason or not keeping his eyes on the quarterback and watching what's happening watching the wide receiver too much he would probably react to this late so again there's a lot of luck but at the same time when you're lucky you have to be ready to receive the luck not everybody's ready to receive luck and the handout coordination to be able to see that pop in the air and get it i mean we've seen time and time again our db group our linebacker group just don't like nice things i'm gonna miss i'm gonna miss chris harris so much because i love that phrase from him our defensive coordinator that left i believe for the tennessee titans um and i believe in the next guy that we brought in as well but i love this passion he kept always saying you don't like nice things when you drop interceptions and that's one thing the commanders have a big problem with because Emmanuel Forbes, first of all, he's bringing a more instinctual ball game to us. I feel like, okay, one thing that I love about Emmanuel Forbes is that we lack speed in the secondary. Now with Quan Martin and him, we don't need more. Benjamin St. Juice, love him. Really long, very good hips for somebody his size, but he's slow. Kendall Fuller, arguably one of the smartest corners in the NFL, but he's slow. So it doesn't really matter how slow you are. Certain things are just going to beat you when you're not athletic. Forbes doesn't have that problem. He has all of the speed explosion that you want. And so at the same time, Emmanuel Forbes is just always in the right position because he knows where he needs to be and then also another problem is that we have his hands a lot of guys to my point with the Chris Harris they don't like nice things is that the ball will literally land in their chest and they'll drop it y'all remember Kendall Fuller doing that y'all remember Jamin Davis doing that I believe Cole Holcomb even did it as well and then Benjamin St. Juice usually just doesn't end up in situations where even he can even catch an interception then when he does they call it back after he got a really good one on Justin Jefferson I still believe that was a good interception they didn't have to call that i felt like that was a petty call it could have gone all the way either way we're allergic to interceptions emmanuel forbes isn't so even in a play like this where it's luck hey man I, would i bet my life savings that kendall fuller would even catch that or benjamin st juice would catch that no I, I mean they should it's an easy catch i'm not acting like this is just some crazy acrobatic play but would i put my life savings on kendall fuller potentially making that catch i don't know and emmanuel forbes if anything has great hands great hands you can tell he played receiver in high school great hands he should not be playing corner when it comes to the hands usually people end up playing corner because they would just they just had terrible hands they wanted to be a receiver had terrible hands transition the corner become a good corner but Emmanuel Forbes has great hands I don't know what the story was for him to transition the corner but thank goodness because the commanders are happy to have you let's go ahead and move on to the next we're already 15 minutes into the video and we, we're on to the second interception all right now this one is pure skill pure read now I do want to point out though 
This is Will Levis, and I'm not a Will Levis fan. And even if it's not Will Levis' fault, maybe this is just the official coordinator's fault. He probably called the play and said, no matter what happens, you are throwing this screen. I think it's like fourth down, too, or something like that. It's like fourth and six. So I guess they tried to catch him off guard. Like, you know, going into the mind of the defender, it's fourth and six. Just don't allow them to get six yards, so they're probably going to play off. Emmanuel Forbes said, forget that. I see you looking. I see you see him see me see all of that. Like he's like, forget that. I know what you're trying to do. And he has the expl explosion, the speed, but most importantly, the instincts and the confidence too. Because some corners may see that and be like, I mean, it's there. I think they're gonna throw it. I I've seen the film in situations like this, and with the way that the receivers coming inside like that, they more than likely will throw it. But some cornerbacks may be, they just don't. Um, possess the confidence enough to go make that play they're too worried about man it's fourth and six let me just not allow a big play i mean whether i make a big play or not whatever as long as we get them off the field on fourth down i'm happy i'm content and that's the problem with a lot of corners emmanuel forbes is not content he read this play a mile away and made the play be even better now this is him on the outside looks like man coverage got beat a little bit right there slight underthrow great catch though i mean i'm never ever gonna be mad at the ball skills never in my life am i gonna be mad at the ball skills all right so he's like i mean it, it gets kind of dark it's hard to see is this against Ar uh, arkansas too is this ricky strongberg over there too um but yeah man emmanuel forbes got beat i'm not gonna lie he, he i mean it's not super beat he has great recovery speed because you know if that's kendall fuller that's done and I again, I love Kendall Fuller, but there's no recovery speed there. But it is still an underthrown ball. If this ball was thrown by, say, Pat Mahomes, it's probably still a touchdown. So there's some skill in there because the ball skills to go up and catch that literally like a receiver and high point the ball is beautiful. Some corners don't even think to get their head turned around. That's another skill. Corners panic, watch the receiver too long, don't get their heads turned around. Automatic flag when they run into the receiver. Receiver's trying to make a play on the ball. The corner's not. Thank goodness Emmanuel Forbes has a knack for getting his um, head turned around, which is something a lot of corners don't possess. And it, it absolutely infuriates me. I, 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 was, I liked William Jackson's talent. He wasn't a great fit for this team. But one big pet peeve I had for them is that he just wouldn't get his head turned around he would panic even with all of the speed that he has similar to Emmanuel Forbes and just panic and, and spaz and try to hit the receiver instead of play the ball like he's supposed to Emmanuel Forbes does a great job of playing the ball and everything but at the same time he's beat by like a yard which isn't bad that's not terrible but Pat Mahomes and the elite quarterbacks of the NFL probably get this right to the end zone where only the receiver can catch it and instead of it being an interception it's a touchdown so that's a mix of skill and luck um, but when in doubt, I'm going to side more to luck because I just don't really see anybody allowing him to do that interception again at the NFL level. It's going to have to be like a really bad quarterback or a quarterback having a really bad. Yeah, that's my boy. Is that my boy Ricky Stromberg? Is that my boy Ricky Stromberg over there? Oh, uh, he, uh, I mean, he kind of got beat. Not bad though. I mean, it didn't matter. It was looking a little ugly for him, but it didn't matter. But that's cool, though, watching Emmanuel Forbes tape. Our boy, Ricky Strongberg, our first-round pick and our third-round pick on the field at the same time in the same play. All right, so moving on, next pick, we have Emmanuel Forbes on the outside. This is straight-up man coverage. He's with them every step of the way. Okay, that's beat. A good quarterback throws that with No, 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 no. A good quarterback at the NFL level. Pat Mahomes, all of those guys. I'm going to just keep saying Pat Mahomes because I don't feel like listing a whole bunch of random different names. He's throwing the ball. They already know it. Look at him. He's already kicking that foot out. The quarterback is throwing the ball now. Like right now, the ball is coming out of his hands. This quarterback is waiting too long. And then, I mean, look at the separation. The ball should already be there by now. Emmanuel Forbes is cooked. Um, but the quarterback throws it extremely late. And, and then another element of luck. Bad throw by the quarterback. Receiver tries to catch it with one hand, doesn't. Emmanuel Forbes is back there to catch it. Now, this one is pure luck. This is probably going to be the luckiest interception that we see all day. The first one, again, you can take some positive traits from it. This one, I really don't have any positive traits other than the fact that he actually just caught the interception. But again, when you're lucky, it also shows that you're just there in the right place. But at the NFL level, this play is very unlikely to happen. It could. I'm not saying it won't. But it's not, it's not going to be anywhere near as easy as this quarterback just made it. Again, 
at this receiver's already kicking his foot out already making his little move his double move to turn around and come back the ball should literally be leaving your hands honestly before that but definitely once he's making his break you gotta let that ball go and i mean maybe you can blame the offensive line for getting bullied and he's trying to step around but the ball should have been out and then when you throw it it's late and you overthrow it it's just come on now come on now dog come on dog come on man all right, looks like this is the same game as well. Super off man coverage or cover three, whatever you want to call it. And this is good coverage. Now, that's great coverage. That's why we prefer him in zone coverage over man because the previous play was man coverage. And, I mean, I think he can handle man coverage, but that double move mutilated him. Versus this play where he's in, I mean, off man or zone, wherever it is. Again, I'm not sitting here about to analyze all of this. It looks like off man to me because everybody's following everybody. I prefer him in off man than just straight up man. But even more, I prefer him in zone. And this is almost zone like. Uh, but it's more, it's off man coverage. But either way, great job to see. I mean, as soon as the receiver, let's slow this down. I mean, literally as soon as the receiver starts to make his break, this time he's on it. I mean, like the second. As soon as the receiver does any funny moves, like, oh, kicking my foot out, Emmanuel Forbes reacts immediately, puts his foot back, and, like, I'm ready to come back. And if this ball is late, which it should have been there sooner, and it was behind. Oh, I just noticed that, too. It was a little late. Actually, it wasn't very late, even though, again, offensive line letting the quarterback down. So it's not late, but it's a little behind. But either way, Emmanuel Forbes has enough time and space burst speed recovery speed whatever you want to call it acceleration to to where that's probably intercepted no matter what now did he get two feet in bounds i guess so yeah it looks like it yeah he got both feet in bounds is he returning this all the way all right good return solid return not like the pick six from against will levis where it was nobody in front of him he still had to outrun some people here some people had some good angles on him so i'm gonna give him a little bit of credit for this return but um just to take this back one more time in normal motion um yeah that's just a great break on the ball man i love that not every corner has that a little bit of luck uh or this one i'm not going to necessarily define it as luck a lot of his luck is just because these quarterbacks aren't good like they, they just these aren't good quarterbacks and offensive line you can blame it on the offensive line whatever but these are situations that it's going to be far more rare to run into at the nfl level so i gotta admit that so that's where the luck comes in. But that's still a great play on the ball. So I'm going to give it skill and luck. And then to just be able to, I mean, look at this. Look at this angle some of these people have on him. He's right here. These people are right here. All they got to do is cut him off. And he's so fast that he still was able to get through. So I'll give him credit for that. That's a mix of skill and luck. Um, we got him up here at the top. That's, that's the best man coverage I've seen yet. And even then, he still got beat a little bit. And another underthrow. Another underthrow. So some skill because this was great and I, again just project into the next level for the commanders with as great as our defensive line is supposed to be i don't think he'll ever have to cover this long like at the nfl level the ball is already usually being thrown by now so he wouldn't even have to cover this long for this guy to basically have to improvise because that wasn't the original route he's already finished the original route that he's supposed to run on the route tree break inside like that he made him forms perfect coverage right there all the way through now when the receiver starts improvising he gets him a little bit but the recovery speed which is some skill there's a lot of skill in this play but level of competition kind of goes into the luck category and I mean, I don't know who the Arizona State quarterback is, but this wasn't it. Um, that, that was a severe underthrow. It's Pac-12 competition. It's not other SEC guys. It's not even Big Ten. It's the Pac-12. So there's some luck there, but, I mean, still great hands to catch that. Excellent hands to catch that. I respect it. That's a mix of both, but I'm going to give it more skill than luck that time. I'm going to lean towards skill, but there was definitely some luck and level competition involved in that. Now, this is him responsible for a zone, reading the quarterback's eyes, and I love that. Terrible throw. Terrible throw. But I love the zone coverage. Absolutely love the zone. That's Vanderbilt. So, I mean, the bottom of the SEC, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I always forget Aunt Vanderbilt is even in the SEC. I'm not going to lie to you. And I think it's because they're the only private university in the SEC, like out of the entire SEC. But they're also the bottom feeder. They're the ones that we just pick, kind of pick on and get a free dub every year. Um, so I literally forget they're in the, the only reason I remember they're in the SEC is because we always end up playing them because I mean, you know how college works 
teams can never play teams like the fact that we played oregon this past year is crazy because we probably won't play them again for another 10 years so the fact that we play vanderbilt as often as we do i'm like oh yeah they, they're clearly an sc team but other than that man i forget it is bad out there and so some luck here but also i like the zone cover skills reading the quarterback he has a he does a great job of reading the quarterback and the way that they pass this receiver off was beautiful and then he knows he has support over the top so he just plays it underneath and is literally watching the quarterback in the ball and has a good feel of where the receiver was going now granted this is where the skill comes in the receiver had a spot like if you want to throw it here to the sideline pat mahomes can get it there there, I don't think Emmanuel Forbes can do anything about it. But then again, he starts slowing down because he sees the quarterback is already throwing the ball. Let me see where the quarterback... Th okay, quarterback throws the ball. Okay, so Emmanuel Forbes already sees that the ball is let go. He's literally just tracking the ball down at this point. That's why he's slowing down. So maybe, maybe a little bit more skill than I think. But I'm still afraid of Pat Mahomes. Then granted, we don't play Pat Mahomes 17 times a year. But there's a, there's a lot of really good quarterbacks at the NFL level. And I'm afraid of them being able to throw it in the perfect bucket on the sideline where Emmanuel Forbes and that safety can't do anything about it. But still, I'm going to give him a lot of credit for the luck there. I respect it. And, um, and, you know, decent return. Not much he can really do there. All right, him all the way on the outside. Again, just let you know he's an outside receiver. He's not a slot corner. I mean, my fault, not receiver. Outside corner, not a slot corner. We brought Quan Martin to do all of that. Um, He's on the outside. Good man coverage, good man coverage. Right there, step for step. And he hooped. I mean, you could argue that's the most pure interception he has yet. Where there's, like, literally no luck involved. Now, you can, you can say maybe the luck is just the the bad decision to throw that because this man is clearly covered and even the safety help is on the way they run in cover two or something like that what is this no they just uh, straight cover one man to man cover one that's it and perfect high point i mean he literally turned into the receiver this play this may be his most impressive interception yet i mean of course the pick six against will levis is very notable he's had a couple of pick sixes leading up to here but if we're just talking about what's most realistic, what translates the best and the easiest, the smoothest to the NFL level, it's a play like this because this involves the least amount of luck other than the fact that the quarterback, you could argue, maybe underthrow it a little bit, even though not much. If Emmanuel Forbes is not there step for step with this guy with the elite athleticism and burst and speed that he has, and I mean, just the ability to high point the ball. This is one of those plays where William Jackson would frustrate the mess out of me because instead of keeping his eyes up, Emmanuel Forbes has his eyes up looking for the ball like he knows the ball is on the way i don't know if it's because of film study i don't know how he knew the ball was already on his way when he's literally watching the receiver the majority he's lit back to the ball back to the ball literally as soon as the quarterback throws the ball he turns his head i'm assuming it's because of the receiver i'm assuming it's a mix of film study and then also receiver looks up he made all right let me look up and a lot of quarter cornerbacks can't do this because they don't have the speed to do this. When you start to turn around and try to track the ball, a cornerback is dangerously petrified, afraid that he will get beat. Because when you're looking up, you can't run as fast as you're normally running. So they're working on trying to catch up to the receiver. Or even if they're already there with the receiver before they look back, they're afraid. If I look back, I might get burnt. I may lose track of the guy, and maybe the ball's thrown further than I think or something like that. Emmanuel Forbes has so much confidence, so much film study. He looked at the receiver looking up. He saw him look up, so he knows that the ball is probably on the way to him. So that, I mean, first of all, that's split-second stuff here. I mean, in regular motion, this is split-second stuff. Receiver looks up. He's already turned around immediately, like... The fact that he saw that quick, he looked up, time for me to look up, and I can still run my 4-3 speed and stick with you step for step while looking up this entire time. And then to literally turn into a receiver and out-receiver the receiver. He wasn't a, once the ball was in the air, he was no longer a cornerback. He It looked like the ball was literally thrown for him. Look how he high points it and everything. Very impressive, man. This is his best interception, in my opinion, so far. We'll see when we get to the end of the video. How, I mean, look how he plucked that up. Too, okay, this is another thing, too. Love Terry McLaurin, but he's kind of a body catcher. Catches it with his chest, tries to corral it in like this, rather than like this as much as he can. He can do both. But, you know, Jahan Dawson is a natural hands catcher. Everything he catches is like this. It's rarely like this. Terry McLaurin love him, but some of his drops are because he tries to catch like this, and that's an inconsistent way of catching the ball, but some people just get comfortable with it. Meanwhile, Emmanuel Forbes, ex-receiver, is going up there and high-pointing that literally like as if he's Jahan Dotson, and I love it, man. I mean, this is literally a receiver catch. Look at, come on now. Didn't touch any other part of his body. Only hands. No helmet, no chest, nothing to reinforce the catch. Only hands to go up there and grab it like that, man. 
that's his best interception so far to me all right this looks like off man oh no this is zone coverage wait was that zone coverage or did he just make a play i'm assuming that's zone coverage. if it's off man coverage this is even more impressive but i doubt it no i think this is looking like just based on what everybody else is doing it looks like off man because he's he's clearly trying to get over here to get get, get this guy emmanuel forbes in off man coverage that's very impressive. This is zone coverage is still impressive, but to be an off man and still keep your eyes on the quarterback so you can make a play like that, because if Emmanuel Forbes doesn't make that interception, this is a easy, what, like six yard gain? Easy for Memphis? Like, like easy. This, this guy isn't getting there in time. It was a good route combination. Little crossing route for these guys. I mean, just a whole bunch of mix up. Like this guy to come out underneath and they have to worry about them. That was a pretty decent route combination, but Emmanuel Forbes, film study guy, um, high IQ, high awareness, great instincts, confidence. Again, even if you have all of that stuff that I just said before confidence, if you don't have the confidence to go out there and trust yourself to have that IQ, to have that awareness and to go make a play yourself and not just let the play come to you, you go to the play. This interception doesn't happen, man. And, and um, this is it. This may replace as my favorite interception. Um, this one had the best coverage, like sticky coverage, man to man, just pure coverage. And that's why I say like a lot of people act like he's only a pick six guy. He's Trevon Diggs. Either it's bad coverage or an interception. I don't agree. He will have great coverage like that previous interception. This one is phenomenal, man. This, these are the instincts I'm talking about. He's supposed to be an off man. This is definitely man coverage. The reason I can tell, the reason I'm assuming, I don't know for super fact but the fact that this guy is doing everything he can to get to this guy shows it has to be some type of man. It's not zone because otherwise Emmanuel Forbes, who's already out here, would just pick him up and allow this corner to get this guy as he's coming across. Emmanuel Forbes, only responsible for this guy, keeping his eyes on the quarterback in the backfield, sees the ball thrown, and I don't care who the ball is going to. Once it's out of the quarterback's hands, it's just as much as my opportunity to catch it as the receiver he's throwing it to. So once he knows he's in good position, he's going to go make a play. Those two interceptions, pure, I mean, you again, level of competition, you could argue some luck there. Because, I mean, maybe the offensive coordinator told him, we're going to draw up this route combination here. We don't care what you read. We don't, we don't even want you to read the corners, the DBs, or nothing. Throw this ball as soon as this guy turns his head. That's how that happens sometimes. Offensive coordinators... No real trust in the quarterback. That's why Bryce Young is so impressive because Alabama let him run the show, call audibles at the line and everything else. A lot of quarterbacks are baby, and I just, again, assuming, guessing that the official coordinator told him, I mean, once this guy gets his head turned around, the ball needs to be out. So it's not even really like he was reading anything. So I'm going back to my main point where this may be a little bit of luck because maybe if the quarterback would have read the situation and actually read the play maybe that's not an interception maybe he doesn't throw that at all but at the same time i mean you have to throw that then either you're throwing that when he threw it or you don't throw it at all because i mean there's no other way and I mean, there's no way they really expected emmanuel forbes and off man coverage they probably ran off man several plays in a row and were like okay y'all running man coverage guess what Y'all want to run man coverage so much, we're going to hit you with a route combination like this and dare you to stop it. And it was good in theory, but Emmanuel Forbes, extremely instinct, um, instinctive um, and, and just great play on the ball right there. So those are some really good interceptions right there. Not much luck at all. Then this is him in, I'm assuming, off-man coverage. Oh, no, that's zone. Is that zone? If, if this is zone, still impressive. But if it's off-man, no, it's definitely zone. Okay, definitely zone great zone coverage again the confidence the instincts the awareness the iq the film study to like again if he were an athletic he wouldn't trust himself this much i'm not gonna lie if he was a four or five some guy four or six guy he would never trust himself this much to keep his eyes on the it's zone coverage but guys usually like i mean they're watching the receiver they are afraid of getting beat deep he's not he's not he's confident He's instinctual and he's athletic. So he trusts himself to keep his eyes on the quarterback no matter what. And again, I'm assuming the ball is already out at this point because he's already going to this corner, this receiver. And the receiver's like, I'm open. I got this. Throw it, with, throw it. I got it. First of all, little luck right here. Severely underthrown. You got to throw that over here where Emmanuel Forbes really doesn't have much of a chance. But then again, with the speed that he has, maybe he does. Maybe the fact that he recognized it so soon and the speed that he has. If he needs to get here by the time the receiver gets there, he probably could have. 
but still great interception here as well great zone coverage interception great instincts great way to keep your eyes on the quarterback and the ball some people again are so worried about getting beat by the by the receiver that they're afraid to take the eyes off of them emmanuel forbes isn't so i respect it and, and in good return there as well man and then where's well where was he on this play i was not ready not ready at all where are we at where's emmanuel forbes at right now which which one is he oh he's the one on the outside okay now that i know let's go back i didn't know they didn't indicate it all right so this is looking like off man to me definitely for sure off man and a little luck because it's just a bad decision a bad throw he he was never not there there was never at any point the receiver just got crazy separation off of the break that he made the move that he made and emmanuel forbes again great confidence and great way to catch that with pretty much one hand i believe that was with one hand am i am i wrong was that not with one hand with the receiver all over him and stuff like that? Like, yeah, the receiver trying to take the ball out of his hand. He pretty much caught that almost with one hand. Great interception there. Not too much to analyze just because it's a combination of things we've already seen. I mean, just great off-man coverage. And then when the ball is in the air, he trusts himself to just go take it. Again, some cornerbacks are so wrapped up in literally only covering the receiver that they miss out on opportunities like this to where if they just trust themselves, see the ball in the air and be like, again, I have just as much of a right to the ball as the receiver that's being targeted. Once the ball is in the air, I should just go make that play. I love that. All right, let's go to the next interception here. What is this? Zone coverage clearly. And I mean, great play. Bad throw. Again, a little luck there because... I'm not sure if the elite quarterbacks necessarily throw that. Oh, my. Look, that return. I, I want to give them credit for that return. But, like, did they just stop caring? Did they just literally give up? Like, what is that? I know the quarterback. I know the quarterback is a quarterback. You don't want to get hurt. You're the most important player on the offense, I guess. But, come on. Something better than that. Like, he ain't even, <laughs> he ain't even turned his head to look at him. He didn't even turn his head to look at Emmanuel Forbes. He just kept like, come on now. He was just hoping somebody may be behind in pursuit to help. I don't know. Right, let's get back to the interception. That was crazy. That's that's disgusting. Um, but yeah, great zone coverage right there. I mean, that ball should have never been thrown. There were technically three corners there covering the same receiver almost. But I love the fact that out of everybody, Emmanuel Forbes was the most serious about getting it. Because this guy right here, this linebacker could have went and got it as well. Like if he really wanted it, he could have went and got it. But he just doesn't have the speed. Emmanuel Forbes. I mean, some corners, again, the ball skills. Because some corners would not even think that they could jump up and catch this ball here this early. They would probably still be backpedaling trying to get closer to the receiver. Emmanuel Forbes, again, I have just as much of a right to get this ball as anybody else on this field. I'm not a typical corner. I see myself as a receiver playing corner. I'm going to go get this ball wherever I need to. And again, a really good grab. Um, no, no body needed there. No helmet, no chest, no nothing. Literally just his hands. Great catch. So, um, again, level of competition, little luck there, but at the same time, man, great skill. Um, and nah, this is the luckiest one here. That's the, <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I, there's nothing to analyze here. This is Emmanuel Forbes coming on the blitz. And then he's just standing around. Nah, bottle that up. Emmanuel Forbes, put that luck that you got right there, put that in a bottle and bring that with you to the commanders. And of course, with his speed, nobody's going to catch him. Nobody's catching him with that type of speed right there. So that speed shows there. That's the only skill that's in there, the ability to catch it. Because again, what I trust, I, I know this is an easy interception, but at this point right here, do we trust our corners, anybody in our defensive group right now, maybe Derek Forrest, other than that, do we trust anybody? Would you put your life savings on them catching that? No. So uh, it's an easy interception, but you still got to give them credit for catching it. And again, if a hey, man, Emmanuel Forbes, if you somehow see this video, please take that luck that you had on this play along with some other plays, bottle it up, and then drink it before every Commanders game because we're going to need it, man. We need luck. We have been extremely unlucky, man. When it comes to luck, when it comes to refs, we have not had it. And if we can get some of that, man, I would surely take it, man. I would definitely surely take it. Do we have another one after this? Okay, so now this is the most off, man. Is this, this Yeah, super zone. They must be up by two touchdowns or something with this. It must be third and 20 or something for them to be playing zone like this. Like, they clearly, this is like a Hail Mary situation. So, again, there goes the ball skills. Not much coverage skills there, but the ball skills to go up and get it because really anybody 
anybody in this situation in this radius three people could have easily have gotten that but Emmanuel Forbes is just that type of guy where he's going to be the one to go get it. I want the ball more than you, more than any of you on the field. Even my other DBs, I want the ball more than any of you guys. So, yeah, man, shouts out to my boy Emmanuel Forbes. In conclusion, it's more skill than luck. But we got to admit, even as big of an Emmanuel Forbes fan as I am, there's a lot of luck in these. And you can also assume going into the NFL with better quarterback play, better offensive designs route combinations and things like that they're gonna try to uh they're not gonna allow him to do some things that he did in these uh clips that we just watched like he's not gonna get away with all of this a lot of these they may be past breakups don't take nothing away from them the 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 instincts the athleticism the brain the body is all there the length everything is there but some of these interceptions may be more like past breakups. And then as y'all clearly saw, three or four of those interceptions were just pure luck. I mean, again, for you to be lucky, you got to be in the right place at the right time. So there's some skill in being lucky to an extent. You got to be in the right place. If you're not in the right place, even if luck strikes, you're not there to catch it. You're not there to receive it. That, I mean, that just works with everything in life. Not even just playing corner, not even just the NFL, not even just sports. Luck does not matter if you're not there to seize it, if you're not there to receive it. And he's just one of those types of people that is always around the ball no matter what, and he's ready to receive it. If there's a lucky play to be had, Emmanuel Forbes is going to be there to get it. And you got to give him some credit for that because... I, we've had corners where the ball is in the air forever and for some reason nobody comes down with it whether they drop it or they can't find it or because their coverage was so bad maybe if they were within three yards of the receiver rather than 10 maybe they would have been there for the tip drill to catch the interception Manuel Forbes is always going to be there so again there's a lot of luck but I'm going to definitely give them more credit and it's way more skill than anything else so yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please leave a like on this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. Let me know if you want more film sessions like these. Of course, I'm going to do an overall film session, just period, um, on Emmanuel Forbes later. Like I said, I'm going to do film sessions on the entire draft class. This does not count. This was like a specific topic. Let me know if you want more specific topics like these. Like Ricky Strongberg maybe versus a certain team. How is he in... in and picking up blitzes or double teams you know what i'm saying like specific things that's separate i want to also do entire film sessions break down weaknesses and strengths best competition lowest competition best games worst games things like that and like how they fit projections and giving them like a comp that's like the individual film sessions i'm gonna do for everybody in the draft class at some point again those are gonna be the ones where it's like an hour long for channel members and then non-channel members it may be like five to eight minutes where you'll get like a quick synopsis a couple of plays here and there that's entirely separate from these type of things where it's a specific topic like emmanuel forbes his interceptions or quan martin's versatility like what position is he best at when i do my quan martin draft film session breakdown it's going to be weaknesses and strengths all of that and it's going to be like a whole comprehensive thing about everything in totality but when i do a specific one for example like this we would do quan martin is he better in the slot or as a safety so let me know whatever ideas you may have for the draft class maybe even some of the draft the free agents let me know if you want more specific ones like these along with the draft ones that i'm already going to do the comprehensive film session so uh man i appreciate all the support leave a like on this video if you liked it and learned things shout out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors name she's scrolling on the screen right now it is now almost 3 8 m that i'm done recording this um i mean i just love football man i'm not gonna lie I, this video is coming out late for a reason i was just up watching emmanuel forbes highlights of tape and i was like why not man and sh again shouts out to my boy trapper dive again let me go ahead and scroll down so you can see you got the logo and everything make sure i go follow them on twitter subscribe to them on youtube everything man they deserve way more than 1.06k subscribers because again you wouldn't have this video from me if they didn't put this video up so you gotta show support but yeah man i'm gonna catch y'all later again let me know in the comment section if you want more specific ones like these because you're already getting the comprehensive ones weaknesses and strengths and all of that but let me know if you want more specific things and if you do let me know whatever topics you may have you know just go ahead and throw out some stuff and i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out